All right, everybody. This is 9.4, the derivative. Uh, we are learning all about the derivative today. <clears throat> and all the derivative is, is a fancy word for slope. That's all it is. It's a fancy word for slope. Okay. I don't think I need these. Okay. <clears throat> so what the derivative does is finds the slope at exactly one point on a given function. So the derivative can do that. But before we keep digging into the actual derivative, let's get into something called the average rate of change, which is, which is essentially just the slope formula. Okay, so the average rate of change from x1 to x2 is given as f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1. Now, when I say this is just the slope formula, this is the same thing as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Same exact thing. The only difference is that this formula is in function notation. But they are the exact same thing. Okay. So in the next examples, we just, we're going to be given a function and we want to find the average rate of change uh, between the given x values. Okay. Yeah, you hear that? Exciting, I know. Okay. <clears throat> so given x squared plus 5x minus 1, find the average rate of change when x is 1 and x is 3. All right. Let's see. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay. There we go. Red size. Perfect. Okay. So for our average rate of change, come on, write for me. For our average rate of change, we're going to say that also important to label everything. So we're gonna make this, the first x value, we're gonna make x1. The second x value, we're gonna make x2. Because once again, labeling everything helps us plug, plug into the formula. Okay, so for my average rate of change, we're gonna get f of x2, which is three, minus, f of x1, which is 1, all over x2, which is 3, minus x1, which is 1. Okay. And now we do have to figure some things out. We need to know what is f of 3 and what is f of 1. And what that means is to take 3 and plug it into the function above for every x. And then after we do that, we're going to take 1 and plug it into the same function for every x. So let's do that. I'll do that down below. I'll say, I need that function there. There we go. I'll say f of 3 is going to give me 3 squared plus 5 times 3 minus 1. And I'll get... 9 plus 15 minus 1, which will give me 24 minus 1, so 23. Okay, so above, I'll write that in. f of 3 becomes 23. All right, and then do it for f of 1. We'll get 1 squared plus 5 times 1 minus 1, you'll get 1 plus 5 minus 1, and you'll get 6 minus 1, which will give me 5, which means that f of 1 becomes 5, all over 3 minus 1, which is 2. Okay, and now finish it up. You're going to get 23 minus 5, which is 18. And 18 over 2 gives me 9. 
So what we're saying is that the average rate of change from an x value of one to an x value of three will give us the average rate of change at nine. Or to word it differently, the slope between the x value at one and the slope between the x value at three is nine. All right, now, <clears throat> of course, I can give you a visual representation of what we're actually doing other than crunching numbers. So just a sketch. So here is my x value of one. Here's my x value of three. The function's x squared, so it's gonna look something like this, right? I mean, like I said, just a sketch is not accurate. So let's say my function looks something like that. Okay, so we're saying that at this, from this y value to this y value, the slope between these two points, oh, put everything in the wrong one, the slope between these two points, right, the average rate of change is nine. <clears throat> the average rate of change is nine. So from x1 to x2, the average rate of change between these two x values is nine. Okay, and that's it. That's all we're finding. We're finding the slope between two points, which is also known as the average rate of change. Okay. Let's do it again. You need to stop sniffing. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So do it again. Find the average rate of change when x is 1 and x is 1 plus h. So once again, label everything. This will be x1, x2. Then do the average rate of change and we'll have f of x2 which is 1 plus h minus f of x1 which is again 1 all over x2 which is 1 plus h minus x1 which is 1 okay and once again, we need to figure out some things. We need to know what is f of one plus h. We already know what f of one is. We did that above. f of one is five. But now we have to figure out what is f of one plus h. So let's do that. f of one plus h, and we're plugging it into the original function above which means I would have one plus h squared plus five times one plus h minus one, right? x squared plus five x minus one. Okay, <clears throat> and now simplify. This will become one plus h times one plus h plus five plus five H minus one. Foil these two and we'll get one plus two H plus H squared plus five plus five H minus one. All right, <clears throat> simplify this, combine like terms, and this will become, well, this one and that one cancel. And we are left with 2h plus h squared. Actually, we got more terms we can combine, right? 2h plus 5h, we get 7h uh, plus h squared plus 5. Okay. And now we put that above. 
So coming back up to the average rate of change, we now have 7h plus h squared plus 5 minus whatever f of 1 is, which was 5. And I'll put that in there all over 1 plus h minus 1. Once again, your 1s will cancel. And you're left with h. All right. Now clean everything up and look at the numerator. Your 5s will cancel. 5 and 5, gone, gone. And you'll have 7h plus h squared over h, which means if I factor out an h, I'll have h times 7 plus h over h. My h is cancel, and we are left with, sorry, I wrote too big on this one, just 7 plus h. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> so what we're saying is the average rate of change when x is 1 and x is 1 plus h, the average rate of change between those two points is 7 plus h. 7 plus h. Huge number. Okay, so another visual representation of what we just did is basically the same as above. All right, here's my function. Here's one, and here's one plus h. What does the h mean? Well, h is the distance from one x value to the next. That's why it says one and one plus h. We went positive h units to get to one plus h. Okay. And then if we drew the function, which would again look something like this, right? So here's my y value, and then here's my y value at 1 plus h. And once again, what we found was that the slope between these two points, depending on the value of h, is represented by 7 plus h. Okay, that's it. That's what we're finding. Once again, we're finding the slope between two points, but in the last one, we decided to throw a letter in there, right? And remember that A and that H represents the distance from one X value to the next. Okay, three says, find the limit as X approaches zero of F of one plus H minus F of one over H. Well, three is a lot simpler because we already did this. F of one plus H minus F of one is exactly what we did here. So all we have to do is take the limit of the final answer we got for two. That's it. Because we already did all the work in step two. So at number three, oops. So for number three, let's see, change that a bit. We'll have the limit as x approaches zero of f of one plus h minus f of one over h will be the limit as h approaches zero of the answer we got in number two, seven plus h. And all we have to do now is plug in zero for h, and we get that the limit as x approaches zero 
of f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 over h will be seven. OK. Perfect. So what does all of this mean, right? Well, remember that I said h was the distance from one x value to the next. Well, what we wanted to say by this limit, sorry, it shouldn't say x approaches 0. It should say h approaches 0. Let me fix that. Because then that wouldn't make sense because we don't have any x's in there. So let me fix that. So this should say as h approaches 0. OK. So what we're saying for this, I need to fix it there too. It's got to be an h, not an x. Okay, okay, now, so as we're saying, as h approaches zero, this means that if a, if h represents a distance from one point to the next, well then, if h is zero, this means that we are no longer finding the slope between two points. We are only finding the slope at one point. Because if h is zero, then there's no distance from one point to the next. You are only stuck on one point. So this means that, like I said, we are getting into the definition of the derivative, which means the derivative can find the slope at exactly one point. That is it. So one more visual representation. Here is my value of x at 1. And then here's my function. And all we have done by the third problem is found the slope at exactly this one point. That's what we have found. We have found the slope at exactly one point, And that slope, when x is 1, happens to be that's it. Or the average rate of change at that point is 7. Okay. <clears throat> so the average rate of change finds the slope between two points. The derivative, or the limit as h approaches 0, will find the slope at 1 point. Pretty cool. Yeah, of course. I think so. All right. Don't you? No, she doesn't. Okay. Which brings us now into the definition of the derivative. Okay. So, for y equals f of x, we define the derivative of f of x denoted by f prime of x. So, did I say how it said? Nope. So, the way to say the derivative is to say f prime of x. That means we are finding the derivative, f prime of x. OK. Well, the derivative is given by the formula f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And something should look familiar to you. f of x plus h minus f of x over h is the different quotient function, right? It's the difference quotient function. We've seen this. And it is also the slope formula for exactly one point. So this is also the average rate of change and the slope formula, everything we did on the first page. OK. So. The derivative has many interpretations, including slope, or the slope of the tangent line, and the instantaneous rate of change. 
We use the derivative to tell us the slope of a function at any given value of x, just like we did on the last page. So the derivative gives you the slope at exactly one point. That's it. Pretty cool. So again, derivative is just fancy for slope. So let's go through finding the derivative using the, what's it called, the four-step process. I think that's what my math lab calls, but I just call it four steps. Okay, which means in order to find the derivative of a function, we must apply the difference quotient to it and then apply the limit at the very end. All right, so let's get through that. Pick you up again, let's do it. Oh, there we go, yeah, okay. So step one of finding the derivative. All right, or we'll call it step A. And it's just like the difference quotient. Step A is what is f of x plus h. This means take x plus h and plug it in for every x and then simplify. So four times x plus h minus x plus h squared plus five. Yes, that's correct. Okay, now we have plugged it in, now we simplify. Four x plus four h minus x plus h squared means x plus h times x plus h plus 5. All right. So something you should highlight, write down, tattoo, whatever you want to do to save you lots of time. If you ever see x plus h squared, right? If you ever see x plus h squared, just know that it will always foil to x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. So if you ever see that, just automatically know that it foils to that and it'll save you lots of time. Okay. So with that being said, we have 4x plus 4h minus parentheses, all that foiled out, x squared plus 2hx plus h squared plus 5. Distribute that negative, and step A is done. That is step A, watch your signs. Watch everything. How am I on the, I am perfect, all right. Step B of the derivative process. Next is what is f of x, plus h minus f of x. Okay, now we take everything that we found in step A and rewrite it. Yes, rewriting it's terrible, I know. 4x plus 4h minus x squared minus 2hx minus h squared plus 5. Don't forget any terms, watch everything you write down. And what we're gonna do is now subtract the original function. So remember, don't forget your parentheses. 4x minus x squared plus five. So after we plug in the original function within the parentheses, 
<clears throat> we'll now distribute that negative and start canceling like terms. So 4x plus 4h minus x squared minus 2hx minus h squared plus 5. Minus five. So distribute that negative, and now terms are going to start to cancel. 4x, negative 4x, gone, gone. Negative x squared, positive x squared, gone, gone. 5, negative 5, gone, gone. All right, perfect. Okay, and now what we're left with is 4 h minus 2 h x minus h squared all right this will end step b or the second step right okay the third step now says c apply the whole difference quotient right f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, which means take what we found in step b, rewrite it, 4h minus 2hx minus h squared, put it all over h. Okay. And then to properly cancel, we're going to factor the h out, h, and you'll be, you'll be left with 4 minus 2x minus h all over h, and then this h and that h cancel, cancel. Yeah. Almost done. Okay. Now good. And then we're left with 4 minus 2x minus h. All right. Now, the fourth and final step is we apply the limit as h approaches zero to the whole difference quotient that we just found. And plug in what we found at the end of step three, four minus two X minus H. Plug in zero for h, and we will get our answer of 4 minus 2x minus h. Oops, we plugged in 0 for h. Just 4 minus 2x. Okay, and this is known as the derivative. So let's write it as the derivative. So this becomes f prime of x equal to 4 minus 2x. And now the last part of all of this is plug in 1. It says, what is f prime at 1? So all this says is take 1 and plug it in for x into the derivative. That's all we have to do. So f prime of one is gonna be four minus two times one, which will give us two. Which, what we can say from this is that when x is one, the slope of the original function when x is one will be 2.
So once again, the derivative finds its slope at any given value of x. So when x is 1, the derivative of, I mean, the slope of the original function is 2. There we go. All right. Woof. Yeehaw. Lots of math, right? Okay. Now, do it again for number 2. Do a little faster this time. Or watch me fast forward. All right, so first step, f of x plus h will be 7 plus 5 over x plus h. Perfect. That's it. That's the end of a. We can't do anything else with that, which means move on to b. f of x plus h minus f of x. So you'll get 7 plus r5 over x plus h, which is what we have here. And now subtract the original function 7 plus 5 over x. Okay. So there's f of x plus h minus f of x, subtract the original function, and we get 7 plus 5 over x plus h minus 7 minus 5 over x. All right. Then we see that our 7s will cancel, and we are left with 5 over x plus h minus 5 over x. Okay, well, this step two is not done yet. What we want to do now is combine these two fractions. So to combine these two fractions, we need a common denominator. And these denominators have nothing in common. This denominator is x. This denominator is x plus h. So all we're going to do is multiply the right fraction by this denominator. x plus h over x plus h. And then we're going to multiply the left fraction by the denominator of the fraction on the right, just by x over x. Okay, put it together, and we get 5x <coughs> minus 5 times x plus h over the new denominator of x times x plus h. All right. Distribute that 5, and we get 5x minus 5x minus 5h over x times x plus h, where we now notice that my 5x's, gone, gone. We are now left with negative 5h over x times x plus h. Now that is the end of step B. Okay, step C. Apply the rest of the difference quotient. f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So take what we got in step b, negative 5h over x times x plus h, and put it over h. Multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. You can put this h over 1 and reciprocate it, or 
what you guys like to say, flip it. Negative 5h over x times x plus h times 1 over h, where you see now that your h's, again, cancel, cancel. And we are left with negative 5 over x times x plus h. And there's the end of the third step. All right. Last step. Apply the limit to the difference quotient, which will give us the derivative. So, D. The limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Take what, what we ended with in the last step. So we'll have the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 5 over x times x plus h. And all we have to do now is plug in 0 for that h. That's it. So we'll get negative 5 over x times x plus 0, which will give us negative 5 over x squared. There it is. There's our derivative. Let's state it as such. It's going to be f prime of x equals negative 5 over x squared. And again, it wants us just to plug in 1, just evaluate the derivative. So f prime of 1 will be negative 5 over 1 squared which will just give us negative five. Okay, and that's it. So what we're saying is when x is one, the slope of the original function is negative five. All right. So if I were to draw, let's say, I drew the second function really fast, right? it would look something like this. And all we are saying is that when x is exactly one, the slope of the original function is gonna be negative five because the derivative gives the slope of the original function. And that's it. Okay. Again, visuals do help out. <clears throat> so it just doesn't make it seem like we are just constantly crunching numbers. All right. Next. All right. So here we're going to learn the definition of a tangent line. We, and we're going to find the equation of a tangent line as well. So the slope of a graph and a tangent line, given y equals f of x, the slope of the graph at the point x, f of x, so basically x, y, is given by, well, look at this. If you ever want to find the slope of the tangent line, the slope of the tangent line is given by the limit formula of the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h, which is the formula for what we just learned of the derivative. So if you find the derivative, you are also finding the slope of the tangent line. Now, the big question is, what does it mean to be tangent? What is a tangent line, and what is the definition of being tangent? Well, look at the picture below. 
If you are a tangent line, this means that your graph will share a point with another graph, right? So you'll share a point with the graph and take off. So being tangent means you share a point and you take off. That's it. So you share a point with another function or another graph and you take off. So let's say I had like this function. And let's say I had a, a point here. Well, my tangent line would come down, share that point, and take off. That's all tangent lines do. The other line you see here is the secant line. You are a secant line if you run through two points. But we don't care about the secant line. We're only looking for the tangent line. And in order to find the equation of any line, you need two ingredients. You need a point and you need a slope. Well, what's great about the tangent line is we have a point that we share and then we use the derivative, which helps us find the slope of the tangent line because the derivative finds the slope at exactly how many points? One point. So in order to create this tangent line, all we need is this point and the slope at that exact point. So that's what the next exercise is about. We're gonna find the derivative of a function, and then we're gonna find the slope of the tangent line, and then we're gonna find the equation of the tangent line and graph it. Okay, so that's what a tangent line is. And remember, the slope of the tangent line is the same as the derivative. Okay, so we have the slope of a tangent line to the graph f at any point x, f of x on the graph is given by the slope of the tangent line is also equal to the derivative, everything I just said above. Given the function x squared plus x, find the derivative. Okay, so again, we're gonna have to buckle down and go through that four step process. But you also can do it in one go. Because I don't think this one wants you to put in all four steps. So let's see what happens if we do it in one go. All right. So to find the derivative, we're going to say f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Now this is how you do it in one go. Okay. So we're going to say the limit as h approaches 0. We're now going to take this function that we are given and plug in x plus h for all the x's. So we'll have x plus h squared plus x plus h. So right here, this is f of x plus h minus the original function of x squared plus x. This is f of x. And of course, we put it all over h. All right, time to simplify. Like I said, to save us time, we know what x plus, x plus h squared foils out to. We know that already. I told you to save it somewhere, stamp it, tattoo it, write it on your wall, whatever, saves you some time. This becomes x squared plus 2hx plus h squared plus x plus h minus the original function. all over h. Oh, and I forgot something. Very important never to forget it. We need that limit in there. 
because we haven't used it yet. It has to tag along the whole way until we use it. So we need, uh, what can I do? Can I move this to the right a bit? Let's see. Nope, don't do that. All right, that's not going to work. OK. Well, I'll squeeze it in there somewhere. All right. So we'll say equals the limit as h approaches 0. There we go. I fit it in there. And then, of course, with some more work, we see that this x squared and that x squared cancel, cancel. This x and that x cancel, cancel. And then we are left with the limit <clears throat> as h approaches 0 of 2hx plus h squared plus h all over h. All right. Factor out the h. And that'll leave me with 2x plus h plus 1 over h. And this h and that h cancel, cancel. And we get the limit as h approaches 0 of 2x plus h plus 1. Plug in 0 for h. And we get the derivative at 2x plus 1. All right, there's the derivative. So once again, we can state it as such. So I'll just write it down here. We get f prime of x equals 2x plus 1. Okay, that ends the first one. Now two, find the slope of the tangent line to the graph of f at x equals 2. So all this is saying is if we want to find the slope of the tangent line, what we have to do is take the derivative and plug in 2 for x. Because remember, the slope of the tangent line is also the derivative. Okay, so all number two says is, hey, take two and plug it into your derivative. That's all it says. So we'll have slope of the tangent line, which means that it's also equal to the derivative, but at this time we're going to plug in two which means we'll get 2 times 2 plus 1, which will give us 5. So this means the slope of the tangent line is 5. So when x is 2, the slope of the tangent line is 5. So at that one point, the slope is 5. <clears throat> okay, last one. Graph the original function and sketch in the tangent line at x equals 2. Okay, well, let's look at the original function because we want to graph the original function. So we have to analyze this function a little bit. So it's x squared plus x. All right, zoom in. There we go. So f of x is x squared plus x. 
this is a quadratic function, right? And it wants us to graph this one perfectly. Trust me, I already checked on my math lab and you need to know the vertex. So this is a quadratic function, which means it will look like the graph of a parabola, but it wants you to graph it perfectly because once you choose that parabola tool, it asks for the vertex. So if you don't remember how to vertex, find the vertex, we'll walk through that really fast. So this is all we need. But we'll probably need one more point, but we have that already. So the vertex, remember, is hk, where h is negative b over 2a. And like I said, this is the same as a quadratic function, ax squared plus bx plus c. Where all we need to know is the b value and the a value from the given function. Okay, so that being said, our b value from this function is going to be one, because there's that one in front of that x. So we're gonna have negative one over two times, and then the leading coefficient is also one. So we get two times one, so h is negative one half. Okay, so we have the first part of the vertex, now we need to find k. So k is known as f of h, which means whatever you found for h, plug it in for h into the original function. That's it. You guys, had, you guys did this on the review already. It was on the review, how to find a vertex, right? So you'd have f of negative one half and plug it in. <clears throat> you get negative one half squared plus negative one half. Let's save some time. Handy dandy calculator. Let's see. Point negative point five squared plus negative point five. And I get negative one fourth. which means that our vertex is at negative one half, negative one fourth. <clears throat> okay, perfect. So there's the vertex. And all we need left to graph this is a point. Well, remember the point, we want is x, y. Well, look at the problem. Do they give us an x value? And they've been giving us an x value the whole time. That x value is two. So remember how functions work. If I plug in an x, the output should be a y. So what we're gonna do is take this x value of two and plug it into the original function to get our output of y. This will give us a point on the function. Okay. So we'll say when x is two, you get f of two, equal to two squared plus two. This means we get that f of two is four plus two, which will get six. Which means that now, since we plugged in an x, the output is y. So the point value or the coordinate should be two, six. Okay.
So um, with that being said, we can graph F, but it still wants us to sketch the tangent line. So before I graph anything, let's go ahead and find the tangent line. And like I said before, uh, the tangent line is a linear function. It's a line. So you need two ingredients. You need a point and you need a slope, which is what we have. We have a point and we have a slope. So that's what we're going to do next. So with that being said, let's go ahead and say find tangent line. And again, the two ingredients we have is that the slope of the tangent line is five and the point we are given is two, six. Now, remember that formula we used to find the equation of a line? It's called the point slope formula. So we will use y minus y1 equal to m times x minus x1. And plug in all the numbers we have, y minus my y1 value of 6 equal to my slope of 5 times x minus my x1 value of 2. Solve for y, and we get our tangent line. Add 6, add 6, and we get y equals 5x minus 4. This is our tangent line. Okay, let's graph then. We have everything we need. We can finish this up. Okay. So looking at my vertex, I'm at negative one half, negative one fourth. Oof. All right. So if I took that out, get a negative one and then zero. Oh yeah. Okay. Cool. So let's just say. Hmm. I'm going to plot the parabola perfectly. So let's say that this is negative one half and here's negative one. And then if it's negative one fourth, oof, let's say that this is negative one fourth, negative one half, three quarters, and negative one. Okay. So when I plot my parabola, the vertex is at negative one half and negative one fourth. So negative one half and negative one fourth. Right there, there's my vertex. Okay, and then the point we wanna plot is two, six. All right, so if I did the same on the right, left side, I'm gonna do the same on the right side. So that's one half, that's one, there's 1.5 and there's two. Okay, and then six, oh boy. If I wanna do the same for the y-axis, I'm just gonna say six is up here. Don't worry, you don't have to make intervals on my math lab, luckily. You just plot the points. So two, six, I'll put that point up here. And all I'm gonna do is connect. So my graph looks like this and that. Okay, so there's the graph of our parabola. Now all this wants to know is, all, all this wants us to do is sketch in the tangent line. So the tangent line doesn't have to be perfect. <clears throat> or maybe it does. 
So at the point 26, which is right there, we will have a tangent line, which means that if I just sketch in my tangent line, my tangent line will come down, intersect this point, and take off. And that is it. That's all it wants. So the blue line's my tangent line, the red line's my parabola, and my tangent line and the parabola share the point two six. And there it is. All right, perfect. Okay. Last one for this one. In application, right? All right. So the revenue in dollars from the sale of X infant car seats is given by R of X equals 24X minus 0.010X squared with the domain between zero and 2,400 car seats. Find the average change in revenue if production has changed from 800 car seats to 850 car seats. All right, so the first one wants the average rate of change. which means it's giving us an x1 and x2 value. So we're gonna do what we did in the very beginning on the first page, right? Here's x1, there's x2. Okay, so A just wants the average rate of change, which means we are gonna take the revenue of x2, subtract the revenue of x1 over x2 minus x1, which means we get the revenue of 850 minus the revenue of 800 over 850 minus 800. Okay, now we have some calculations to do. You're gonna take 850 and plug it into the revenue function. And you're gonna take 800 and plug it into the revenue function and subtract the difference. Okay, so with that being said, uh, do I still have my calculator up on here? Let's see. Oops. Go. Do that. Do it myself there. All right. So I'm just going to put this in my table real fast. Just makes it faster. 24x minus 0 0.010x squared. Right, that I have all my decimals there. Hit enter, 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 enter. Make sure it's on ask, and I'm gonna type in 850 and 800. All right, perfect, which means down here, all right, we are going to get 13,175 minus 12,800 over 50. Okay, and then I'll go back to my calculator and type in exactly what I wrote down there. Fraction, 13,175 minus 12,800 over 50, and we get seven, Point five. Okay, so what we're saying with this answer is that from 800 car seats to 850 car seats, if we have a positive slope, 
which is 7.5, we are saying that the revenue is increasing by $7.50 per car seat. That's what this means. Okay. All right. So that's how we do that one. That's the average rate of change, just like we did on the very first page. Now the second one says find the derivative. Okay. So let's go back here. All right, so we want the derivative of the revenue function. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to say the limit as h approaches zero of r of x plus h minus r of x over h. And the reason it's r because our revenue function's name is r. Okay. And once again, we're trying to do this in one go, right? So the limit as h approaches zero of 24 times x plus h minus 0 0.010 times x plus h squared. Remember, all of this is f of x plus h or r of x plus h minus the original function of 24x minus 0.010x squared. And this is all over h. Okay. So next step. We have the limit as h approaches zero and distribute everything. You'd have 24x plus 24h. And remember, we know what this foils to, that x plus h squared. So I'm just going to write it above. So we can go ahead and distribute already, save some time. So you'll get minus 0 0.010 x squared minus what is 0 0.010 times 2, 0 0.02. 0 0.02 x h minus 0 0.010 h squared. Ooh. <clears throat> All right, that's over. Minus 24x plus 0 0.010 x squared. All over h. Okay, now this 24, and that 24, gone, gone. This x squared and that x squared, gone, gone. All right, what do we have left? The limit as h approaches zero of 24h minus 0 0.02 xh. <clears throat> Minus 0 0.01. I think I can just write it as 01h squared. Pretty sure I could get away with that. h squared over h. Okay. And like always, factor the h out from the numerator and we're done. 24 minus 0. Point, whoop, again, don't forget it. The limit as h approaches zero of h times 24 minus 0.02x minus 0.01h over h. And now your h is canceled. 
you can now plug in the zero for that H, which means that to finish it up, our derivative, r prime of x is going to be 24 minus 0 0.02x. And there it is. There's b. Excruciating, I know. All right, last one, I think, right? Yep. All right. C, find the revenue and the instantaneous rate of change of revenue at a production level of 800 car seats and write a brief verbal interpretation of these results. Okay, so what this one tells us is, says, hey, take 800, plug it into the revenue function, and then take 800 and plug it into the derivative and explain the results. That's it. So the first thing we're gonna do is plug it into the original function r of x. I'll get my calculator again. So we're gonna say, actually, I think we did it already, didn't we? So we're gonna say r of 800. So the revenue at 800 car seats, which I think we did already, it's on the paper, is 12,800 dollars. That is the revenue you're making when you sell 800 car seats. And then it says plug it in to the derivative. So go quit there, move here. Our derivative is 24 minus 0 0.02. And we're going to plug in 800. And we are going to get $8. OK. What do they mean, right? Well, fair enough. For the first one, this means that at 800 car seats, revenue is $12,800. That one's easy to interpret. The next one says it's the derivative. So remember, whenever you are interpreting these and you're looking at the derivative, always think of slope. I always think of slope. So the way to interpret this one says that at 800 car seats, now when I say think of slope, I also say, also think of, is this number positive or negative? And if it's positive, this means slope is increasing. If it's negative, this means slope is decreasing. So we say at 800 car seats, <clears throat> revenue is increasing. That's it. You can say revenue is increasing by $8 per car seat. Okay, and it's just as simple as that. All right, Joe, that is the derivative. Lots and lots of algebra and very, very easy to make a mistake. So watch all your steps. All right, that's it. See you at the next one.